This is Kite Cutter TV with another presentation. We gotta talk about this. Okay, guys, the new border chaos, a crisis of Biden's own making. And the reason why this is happening is because of the hatred for Donald Trump. Why these people don't like Trump so much, I have no idea. But because the media has brainwashed people into thinking that Donald Trump was a racist and Biden's promises before he came into office, he's trying to fulfill all of his promises. But the promises that he made are policies that are going to do damage to the United States, especially this immigration policies that he's coming up with is creating chaos and a crisis at the southern border that they don't want to acknowledge. Let's check this out. A crisis is a terrible thing to create. This nonetheless is what President Biden has done at the southern border. His rhetoric during the campaign suggested an open-handed approach to migrants coming to the U.S. and his early moves to undo Donald Trump's border policies are creating a migrant surge that risks running out of control. Even his own Democrats, some of the Democrats in his own party, are warning him that this is not good policies. You have 10,000 migrants apprehended in one week in a single Texas border sector, says a Democrat congressman. So as I said, even his own people are warning him. Is he listening? Not sure. U.S. Representative Henry Sweller reported the apprehensions of approximately 10,000 migrants in the last seven days in the Rio Grande Valley sector. He said agents apprehended 25 in the past two days alone. We are weeks, maybe even days away from a crisis on the southern border. Inaction is simply not an option. Okay, so this is his own party is warning him. Because of his promises, we're going to have migrant caravans. We got illegal immigration coming to the border. People that don't even need to be claiming asylum is coming to the border trying to claim asylum. And now we have so many of these minors coming to the border. They try to blame Trump, said that it was Trump's fault that he was keeping kids in cages, which was a Obama policy, mind you. But wait until the left turns on Biden because it's coming. And it's coming real soon. We got that and a few more illegal immigration topics to get into. Check this out. Surge in illegal immigration at the Mexican border. A new Axios report found the White House is in need of 20,000 beds. That's to quickly accommodate the surge of unaccompanied minors at the border. The Biden administration is blaming the problem on social distancing restrictions and the Trump administration for, quote, dismantling the country's immigration system. But Republicans are blaming the Biden administration's relaxed policies. Democrats in Texas say they need help handling all of it. It's not a crisis yet, but it will become a crisis. The number of unaccompanied kids, the number of uh, families that are coming in are, are just increasing every day. The Department of Homeland Security is projecting that 117,000 unaccompanied minors will cross the border this year. Meanwhile, California has announced that they are setting aside $28 million to support illegal migrants who are entering into the country. The funding is expected to last through June and comes as President Biden continues to reverse former President Donald Trump's Remain in Mexico policy, which dictates that migrants wait in Mexico until their court hearings. The money will pay for hotel rooms and transportation into the interior of the United States. The money will also go to charity centers in San Diego that will provide food, transportation, and help with travel logistics. The state will also pay for health care for the migrants, including COVID-19 testing. The Biden administration recently allowed about 26,000 migrants who were waiting in Mexico into the country. At the same time, the U.S. is releasing more migrants who are not enrolled in the Remain in Mexico policy into the country, as it did for hundreds of thousands of people before Trump ended the catch and release policy. For more on this, let's bring in former acting DHS Secretary Chad Wolf. Great to have you. I want to show you a couple of numbers here. So CBP, Customs and Border Patrol, had a 1,763 unaccompanied migrant children in its custody as of Tuesday, 625 of whom had been held more than 72 hours. I, I think that's going to be another issue, right, because there is this issue of how long you can hold them is going to come up. Well, absolutely. I think the numbers uh, across the border, whether it's single adults, whether it's families or UACs are up across the board. And particularly UACs are troubling because you can't release them. Uh, you can't do the catch and release like you can with the family mm -hmm. units and the single adults that we see that the Biden administration is doing. So what does that mean? You have to hold them in Border Patrol facilities and then you have to hold them in HHS facilities. And what happens when you have so many is it starts to back up, and I think that's what we're seeing now. And so you're, you're seeing kids held for longer than 72 hours, which is really the, the top limit 
of how long they should be held in Border Patrol facilities, which are essentially jail-like settings. You need to get them to HHS uh, so that they have a more appropriate setting, but at the end of the day, you need to send the right message, and the wrong message is currently being sent to the tra traffickers, the smugglers, and others. Uh, that now is not the time to come. There is a time to come, it's just not now. And that message is too nuanced. They're yeah. not going to get it. And you're seeing the numbers just increase across the board. Yeah. Dana mentioned that some of them are wearing T-shirts. That's an extraordinary thing, is it not? Have, have you seen that before? They're wearing T-shirts, let us in? I, I have not. And I think what it tells you is that the advocacy community, there are NGOs and others, that their entire goal is to make sure that anyone that shows up at the border gets into the United States and is able to stay, perhaps, for years and years, regardless of whether they actually have an, a, a legitimate asylum claim or not. Um, and I'm sure that these types of organizations are providing these T-shirts to these folks, trying to send a political message and trying to play uh, politics with the safety and the security of that border. I'm really interested in the cartel angle and, and what we do there. There's a sheriff in Arizona named uh, Mark Daniels. He's in Cochise County. And he said, we just built roads for the cartels. Think about that. Yeah, absolutely. I know Sheriff Daniels pretty well. Um, and a lot of the law enforcement community along that border are seeing firsthand the results of what we have seen over the past four or five weeks. And there are going to be the ones that are going to have to deal with the increase in illegal apprehensions, the public safety risk, and everything else that goes on in those communities. And you see that when Border Patrol is overwhelmed, state and local law enforcement are going to have to step up. But I think it's important to note there's not one individual that is smuggled across that border or comes across that border illegally that's not paying a cartel, a trafficker, or a smuggler to do that. And so essentially the Biden administration is fueling more and more cartels making them more profitable because each and every person that they send across that border uh, is money in their pocket. Wow, that's an extraordinary thing to say. Uh, the administration will not call this a crisis yet. Maybe that changes. What would you call it? Oh, it's absolutely a crisis. I mean, when you start building tent facilities, HHS facilities, and DHS is certainly looking at facilities, DHS is redeploying officers from the northern border to the southern border. Uh, you have, uh, you know, comments about they're working 24-7. All indications is it's a crisis. Everyone knows it's a crisis. They need to be honest with the American people. Uh, and certainly those communities along those borders are experiencing an influx of individuals that are likely going to reach historic proportions in the next several months. All right, Chad Wolf, uh, always good to have you. As we continue to follow this story, we'll be on top Thank of you. Thank you, sir. Sheriff, is there a crisis at the border or not? Let's start with that. Well, let's just be frank. There is a crisis at the border, and uh, we've got Tent City down there, and we've got them come, a lot of people coming over from all over the world that, that are now in the United States. And we've got NBC reporting that some COVID-positive migrants took buses in North Carolina, Maryland, and New Jersey. Are they testing migrants? Well, what's going on with this? I mean, people read the headline, they say, hold on a second. So there are illegal immigrants into the country who are testing positive with COVID, and they're being released to wherever they want to go in the country. What are the protocols here? Well, what I understand is, as of several weeks ago, they didn't have the testing and capability at the border, so they were coming in unknown. Now they're testing, and it looks like uh, some reports are about 6% of those coming across the border are going to be COVID positive. And those people are being vetted, and I believe they're being released into the interior of the United States. There's also a major influx of unaccompanied minors, of, of children in many cases, or teenagers. Uh, 13,000, according to CBP, are expected to cross in May alone. I mean, they're, they're projecting out here what they think is going to happen. Here we've got DHS projections of, of unaccompanied migrant children uh, this year. They're, they're expecting 117,000 for the year, which people can see would be the most we've had stretching back to 2018 and and almost to double that 2018 number. Sheriff, what, what's causing the huge surge in unaccompanied minors at the border? What's happening here? Well, there's several things going on. One, I think there are parents that are in horrible places that are saying kids go north for a better life, but also all these kids coming across, you gotta believe that the cartels got their hand in it. And what a great American tragedy of 120,000 kids coming across that border, and they're gonna end up in sex trafficking, or some people saying being slavery. 
issues uh, down there. They're going to be recycled. We know we've, we're hearing stories of recycling where they're being used to get other people across the border because they're a family unit. So there's all kinds of organized crime going on around these kids. It has become and is becoming the great American tragedy. And this is just awful. My heart breaks for those children. I, uh, I, ho I hope as they find sponsors that my fear is, is that these people that uh, are evildoers and, uh, and of course it may just overburden our already overburdened foster care program. But as you show in pictures of those, those poor children, those poor, poor, innocent children, uh, it's a horrible tragedy. And, you know, and I guess on a, maybe a positive note, we're protecting them from that evil Dr. Seuss I hear. But, yeah, not, uh, yeah there's at least at least six of his books will no longer find their way uh, into those, those children or any children's hands for that matter, given what's going on.